talk about the situation of environmental human rights defenders in Amazonia and about why protecting this area is so challenging. First of all, who is an environmental human rights defender? The UN defines environmental human rights defenders as individuals and groups who, in their personal or professional capacity and in a peaceful manner, strive to protect and promote human rights relating to the environment, including water, air, land, flora and fauna. Environmental human rights defenders are often ordinary people identified above all by their actions to protect environmental rights, by exposing and opposing environmental destruction or land grabbing. Environmental human rights defenders are on the front line of climate action and are often working to save their local communities, while facing abuse, intimidation, violence and sometimes even murder. According to a report of Global Witness published in 2021, 227 land and environmental activists were killed in 2020, the highest number ever recorded for a second consecutive year. In 2020, 263 murders of human rights defenders were recorded in Latin America, 77% of which in the countries of the Amazon Basin. 69% of these murders were against leaders working for the defense of their territories and fighting for the rights of indigenous peoples. Overall, indigenous peoples account for 40% of environmental human rights defenders killed, which is a very alarming figure if we consider that they constitute only 5% of the global population. But why is it so difficult to protect Amazonia? Violent attacks and intimidation by illegal loggers or miners are one of the main threats to the security of human rights defenders. Such activities often respond to the interests of corporations that promote hydrocarbon extraction, indiscriminate mining and deforestation. Reports have noticed that attacks are also fomented, if not directly carried out, by the police or armed forces and public officials. Impunity and delays in investigating and trying those responsible for these actions are other reasons behind attacks against and intimidation of environmental human rights defenders. Indigenous leaders and more generally members of indigenous communities fighting for human rights and the protection of the environment are often the target of such attacks. Indigenous peoples are targeted across various countries of the Amazon region such as Ecuador, Colombia and Brazil and the following is just one example of a trend that takes place on a daily basis. In 2014, Three leaders of the Saveto community, a Peruvian indigenous community located near the Brazilian border, were cruelly murdered and found several days after their disappearance. Edwin Chota Valera, Leoncio Quintesima and Francisco Pinedo had already been threatened by illegal loggers since they had started to denounce the operations of a mafia of timber trafficking, operating in the territory of their community. According to many, inaction by the state in protecting the defenders and addressing their complaints and testimonies was decisive for the assassination of the leaders, as well as for the current state of impunity surrounding the case. However, indigenous leaders are not the only defenders threatened in their efforts to protect the Amazon forest. A case that has received considerable attention in recent years in the media is one of Stephen Donziger. Stephen Donziger is an American attorney that in 1993 filed a lawsuit in New York against Texaco, which later merged with Chevron, on behalf of a group of residents of the Lago Agrio region in Ecuador, accusing it of having caused an environmental disaster in the rainforest due to the dumping of toxic waste. However, this first lawsuit was dismissed on the ground of forum non-convenience, meaning that it was declared that the case could not be carried out in the United States. Following Chevron's claims, in 2002, Ecuador was then considered as an alternative forum. In 2011, the Ecuador Supreme Court ruled against Chevron, which started a counter-litigation arguing that Donziger and his colleagues had paid bribes in Ecuador. In 2018, an international tribunal in The Hague ruled in favor of Chevron, which continued its campaign by targeting Donziger through civil and criminal contempt actions. In particular, Donziger was made liable for millions of dollars in Chevron's legal costs, the company was granted seizure of his laptop and cell phone, and after his refusal, he was put under house arrest. 
At the moment, Donziger has already been confined at home for nearly two years for a charge that would imply a maximum of six months of imprisonment. In September 2021, the United Nations High Commissioner on Human Rights ruled that Donziger's home detention is illegal under international law, as it violates provisions such as the right to a fair trial and a fair judge, and it has called on the United States to release him. The situation of human rights defenders in Amazonia is very worrying, so what could be the possible avenues to protect them? First of all, it's important to keep the spotlight on these cases of violence, so that they're not forgotten or swept under the rug. This includes listening to the voice of activists and magnifying their message without substituting their voices. Secondly, pressure should be kept on state to address such issues by creating regulations that effectively support activists and by addressing ongoing cases of impunity. Lastly, businesses have a role to play too. They must conduct proper due diligence, carry out operations with transparency, and ensuring that the prior free and informed consent of the communities affected by certain activities is granted at all times. Check the other episodes of this mini-series to keep learning about Amazonia. Follow our social media to stay updated on this issue and join the fight for Amazonia.